Welcome back to another Inside EVs episode. Today we're in New York City driving the brand new Polestar 2. In this video, we will go through first driving impressions, the difference between the performance pack and the non-performance pack, and share some of the interesting things about our experience with Polestar 2. As always, please subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel for our weekly car review and podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in to this episode on Inside EVs. We are now in the Polestar 2. This is the one with the performance upgrades. You know that because it has these fantastic gold seat belts. It also has the Olean's adjustable dampers that we saw on the V60 Polestar uh, that we drove a few weeks ago, I guess. And it also has the Brembo big brakes. Uh, a lot of uh, work went into these Brembo calipers to make them specifically for an electric vehicle application. Polestar spent a lot of time with Brembo working to create a caliper that has the least amount of drag possible because a lot of people don't realize brakes drag on discs as you drive and it hurts your range. Um, Polestar had mentioned that they just did a 70 mile per hour range test between the uh, same exact car, Polestar 2, but with the 19 inch wheels, non-performance, and the performance with the 20 inch wheels. As you know, we all do 20 or 70 mile per hour range tests at inside EVs, and there was only a seven or eight mile difference between the two. That is pretty impressive to get all of that extra chassis performance. Keep in mind the performance pack isn't like other manufacturers where it gives you a ton more power. It's actually the exact same drivetrain as the other cars. It's just suspension, braking, and handling upgrade. So it's a true, uh, in the driver sense, performance upgrade from a chassis, tire, wheel selection, uh, brakes, and damper perspective. Can't complain about that. I think they took the right move. So I spent about an hour in the Polestar 2 this morning, the non-performance one, and now it will be my first time to have a go in the performance package. So let's get the car set up how I kind of want it. Um, I think we'll go for a nice sporty style drive since we're up here uh, near Bear Mountain in New York where the roads are fantastic and this is really truly a performance oriented vehicle. We're going to keep one pedal driving on standard creep off. One pedal driving, of course, is full region, and then when you come to a stop, it blends brakes to stop the car. We're gonna put steering feel in standard. Firm's pretty firm, light's too light. Standard is perfect. We're gonna turn off lane keeping aid, just in case we happen to hit a line. It doesn't push us back. Everything else will keep on. And let's see, we're at 49% state of charge. Should be good. There's no start button in this car. It's foot on the brake and put it in drive and not yet but very soon your cell phone will act as a key um, i always thought it was silly to have an ignition switch for an electric vehicle and this one does not have one so good work to pull star there while we're pulling out of the parking lot here let's go over some specs you have 150 kilowatt peak charging uh, i have not been able to test the exact charging curve of this car yet and i'm hoping it's 150 kilowatt to 80 percent Polestar said it would do that, um, but of course we don't know until we really test truly. Next we have battery capacity. So the battery capacity of this car is 78 kilowatt hours. That's your total capacity. And out of that, they use about 75 kilowatt hours. So you have to keep a little extra in the battery just to prevent it from bricking and having issues if you overcharge it too much or undercharge it too much. And of course you can hide a little bit of degradation by eating into that buffer. I'm not sure of Polestar's battery management strategy yet, um, but it seems they are, uh, you know, seeming to take a really smart approach. Um, that buffer is relatively small. Look at, you know, Audi e-tron, for example, that has a, what, an eight or 10 kilowatt hour buffer. Uh, this is pretty good. Then you have the motors, what drives the car. There are two identical permanent magnet, 100, actually, I don't know, are they 150 kilowatt output? I'll put it on the screen here. Uh, basically two identical motors that can produce the same power. Under partial throttle and load, it's rear bias. And that's partially because the weight balance is 5149. So having a little extra rear drive helps even out that front bias just a slightly. Um, 
but at wide open acceleration, of course, it's 50-50. And this car under wide open acceleration is fast. I mean, no getting around it. It's a very capable car. Is it melt your face Tesla ludicrous mode fast? No. This is, uh, uh, feels like a Model 3 dual motor, a Model S 100D long range type thing, if you're familiar. I know a lot of our audience has seat time in Teslas. That's why I'm making that comparison. I would say it's adequate. I've never once wanted more power and I've been pushing the car pretty hard on these roads. Um, total range has yet to be rated by the EPA. It's 295 WLTP, but we all know WLTP is if you drive at two miles an hour, it's just not accurate. So we're gonna have somewhere in that mid 200 range, maybe 250 is my guess. Um, driving it hard, it's showing, uh, you know, I'm sure we, you know, we all kind of drove up here together and now I'm going out on my own, but about 100 miles of range at 50%. So 200 miles of range of pretty much beating the crap out of the car like this. <laughs> this one feels pretty fast. I don't know, that felt faster than I had remembered and we're only at 48% state of charge. Uh, it's great. Talking about design, of course, look at the exterior of this thing. This is a beautiful car, no question. It's got LEDs everywhere. It's crisp, it's sleek. It's not uh, showy at all. It's probably the best looking EV on sale. I mean, definitely is the best looking EV on sale. And I, I mean, I personally, big check mark from me. And that's what you get with Polestar. The CEO of the company was one of the designers over at Volvo. And now they, they, it is one of the only car companies that is led and run by a designer. So a lot of those decisions that either, you know, choices get made on the cutting room floor because of X, Y, or Z cost related or engineering related design takes that step. And I think they've done a fantastic job. There's no denying the connection to Volvo driving this Polestar too. Um, it's important to note that, that Volvo does own 50% of Polestar. They really are able to take, and by they I mean Polestar, they're able to take a large portion of their uh, technology for basically from pilot assist to UI to even these air conditioning vent knobs are straight out of Volvo and really focus their efforts with a smaller team on building a great electric vehicle and that's exactly what they've done here they've taken all of the best stuff from Volvo which really is some of the best in the industry and then put it in an even cooler car that's now electric I'm such a you know not to like totally praise them for everything but they've done a really good job here and now that we're cruising at speed, we're doing 50 miles per hour, and I can pretty much whisper to you, it is so much quieter. Uh, it's important to make the comparison between this and the big elephant in the room, the Model 3. I drove to drive this Polestar in a brand new Model 3 Standard Range Plus, uh, which of course is a less expensive vehicle, but I own a Model 3 Performance that's the same. And the level of refinement, noise, uh, basically all the NVH, is so much better in this car than the Tesla Model 3. Just sitting in here, it's a more premium place to be. And you know, it's hard to really uh, ignore how much time they've spent making this interior this beautiful. There are a couple downsides, however, that I'm starting to feel. The first is rear visibility. It is very small window back there, almost unnecessarily small and the blind spots are quite large. Now, thankfully this car is pilot assist with amazing blind spot monitoring. So is that as big of a deal today as it was with a car having blind spots 10 years ago? I would argue no, uh, but I would also argue that the XC40 recharge, which is gonna be built on this platform would probably have less blind spots. Um, however, the Polestar 2 looks cooler. <laughs> Don't you think? Give up a little visibility for, for looks. I think that makes sense, especially with all of the safety tech this car has. Another downside is this volume knob. And it's the same volume knob that you get into the other Geely products in Volvo. However, they put it in a weird place that's just in front of the shifter. So I have to like reach around the shifter to get to it. It's just a pretty odd location to put that knob in. I don't know. I think if you're resting your hand on the shifter, it's fine. You can adjust it with your fingers. But I, before I was driving around, and because my cup is here, it's in an ergonomically poor position. It was hard. It was just kind of in the way to adjust the volume. Of course, I can do it from the steering wheel though. And let's talk about that safety tech. It's 
uh, basically uh, Volvo's Pilot Assist, but now in a new iteration where it can be software updated with new functionality. It has four cameras, front radar sensor, a um, whole bunch of cool stuff, and it also just lets you put it on the wheel here. I click this button, does adaptive cruise, turn it to the right, and now I'm pilot assisting. Um, interesting thing with, with all Volvo Geely products is to adjust your speed, typically one press would be one mile per hour and a press and hold would be five. In these cars, one press is five mile per hour jumps and a press and hold is only one. It just takes a little bit of getting used to, but still, nothing bad at all. Sound system's a 600 plus or minus watt uh, Harman Kardon unit. They've hidden the speakers behind this fabric, which I think is pretty interesting. And uh, you seriously don't see a speaker grill anywhere. It's a really good, rich system. Uh, if anyone's had a chance to listen to the Bowers and Wilkins and some of their products, it's not that good. But it's way more than acceptable, and I would say on par with some of its competitors. That was the little noise saying to grip the steering wheel a little bit harder, put some torque in that, that weight sensor. So what we have here is, is technical specs that really don't blow anyone away, but put together really make a solid product, especially for the price. I think this car is worth every bit of asking, which is right around $60,000. You also get the $7,500 tax credit. And oh, by the way, because Polestar is its own brand, sale of Volvo EVs and plug-ins don't count towards that 200 uh, thousand units uh, for the $7,500 credit that uh, each manufacturer is allotted in the U.S. So that's great news. It means they'll be able to offer that $7,500 tax credit longer. Now we haven't seen the full capability of this system yet. It still has a couple of software revisions to go through before they open it up to the public. However, the car will route you through charging stations and soon will support technology to do real-time real charging status so that you can basically go from New York to Los Angeles and it will tell you where to stop, the speed of the chargers, how long you have to wait there, and if the chargers are working. This is super, super important. Since Polestar invited me over to New York and I had the opportunity to switch cars, I'm one of the only ones who's been able to drive both the performance package and the non-performance package. And I can tell you, driving around normally, there is no feel. If anything, uh, the adjustable Olean's dampers on the performance pack make this car more compliant than the non-performance. I'm not feeling these bumps as much as I were. However, the wheel and tire noise is louder with the 20-inch wheels. I feel a little bit of cabin boominess almost over bumps. Nothing annoying, nothing that is really uh, abnormal. It's just something you get with going with larger and, and bigger wheels and tires. And you definitely notice some NVH coming in the car. Look, I'll hit these bumps. It just makes a little bit more noise than if we had the non-performance. But in terms of compliance, it is better, I'm surprised I'm saying this, but it's true, it is better in the performance package than it is without. Like it launches pretty soft, but as soon as you get going, this thing rips. It is so quick. Here's another one. <laughs> yeah, it's not slow. Don't get me, don't listen to anyone that thinks it's slow. It's not. I think we all agree though, it is very capable. What a machine. Cruising down the highway, let's try some pilot assisting. So I'm gonna have my set speed at 75. I have the steering active and I'm covering the wheel. Now this is not an autonomous system. It probably will never be. Volvo is not, Volvo Group isn't going there with this level of technology, which is very smart. It's really good advanced driver assistance system, ADAS. And uh, everything the car is doing right now, I'm not giving it any input. I'm here just managing and monitoring the situation. And this is a relatively fast, narrow uh, uh, road here, 9W, driving through uh, New York. And uh, fun story, my grandmother lives somewhere right over here. I should go see her, maybe after this. No question, you could just sit in this car and eat up the miles, especially with 150 kilowatt charging. It means long distance trips are very feasible. Um, and this pilot assist just takes so much effort away from the driver to having to keep it in the lanes. This is great driver assistance. And I've experienced it in other Volvos as well. To be expected, it's a great system. But how is it now? Let's turn that off. Let's click our little car. Let's put it in ESC sport mode. Not that we're gonna be sliding around too much. And let's see what it's like when we really start picking up the pace a little bit. Big power up the hill here. We're gonna regen into this corner. Again, we're in the performance car still. 
We have damper set to eight, which is in the middle. You have, uh, I guess, 16 adjustments on the damper, and it basically goes from full soft to full hard. And I've driven with these dampers in the V60 Polestar, which is the car Polestar kind of uh, breathed on a little bit and spiced up, and it's a plug-in hybrid. And these dampers make a huge, huge difference when you adjust them. But here they are in the middle setting. So let's start having some fun. Oh wow, a little lane change here. Great stability at speed. I'm not going to show you what the speedometer was, but that was a really big number. Let's change lanes here. I can hear the tires just working a little bit. Really, really good chassis control. I'm going to lift off. Really nice lift off, but very balanced. That's impressive, and that's a big difference from the non-performance car. Uh, if you're going to be doing that kind of driving, I would 100% recommend the Polestar uh, performance package and the the thing is the standard car was great I was super pleased with it this car is actually smoother on those initial little bumps but body movements much more controlled when you really start pushing the car and it's also um, it's it's just as comfortable and livable as the other so there's no downside really to get the performance option just enhances the experience so aside from that noise but that's just minor nitpicking Wow, this thing is a fast way to travel down the highway. This is a weapon. Getting from A to B in an urban environment in an electric car that handles this well, you, you really can't beat it. This is so confidence inspiring. Throwing into corners, dodging leaves. Look at those views off there in the distance. We're gonna try those brakes. Really strong braking performance. Um, and really good pedal feel as well. A lot of EVs have this odd brake pedal blending where you go from regen to friction brakes and it's a little spongy and not accurate. This is a very accurate and predictable pedal. Now keep in mind, I'm driving it in the one pedal driving. So most of the regen's on the accelerator. If I turn that off, we're gonna start to coast. Let's see if I can feel the pedal difference. Nope, even then when it blends regen even more, you. It gives you a little graph when it blend, uh, blends friction brakes, but you don't feel it. It's it's super solid, very impressive. So if I was getting a Polestar 2, which why wouldn't I? This is a great car. Uh, I would get the performance package. And pr surprisingly, based on the order numbers and reservations so far, so has most others. I think a lot of enthusiasts will buy this car because it does things that Tesla does poorly. It has a great interior. It has great chassis dynamics. Don't get me wrong, the Model 3 does too, but this is different. This is just more of a classy, uh, fast, Swedish, Nordic way to, <laughs> to get across town. And it's certainly capable of that. I mean, we just ripped up that section of road that I've driven in many cars, and this is one of the most confidence-inspiring I've had through there. Wow, impressive work to Polestar on chassis tuning. I, it, there's nothing more you could ask for in this sedan hatchback SUV CUV market. This is great. The UI we should talk about as well. This is a Google-based UI. It's one of the first, actually it is the first iteration of any Google platform in a vehicle. Uh-oh, I just triggered it. Hey Google, shut up. For that, you'll need to no, sign hey Google, Google, stop. Account. So I'll have to use G instead of so this is the first iteration of G inside of a car uh, platform, and it's super snappy. The maps work great. When I put in a destination, of course, it tells me what I'm going to arrive with. So many EVs cannot do that, and it's so important. So it said 14 when I left, then I ripped on it pretty hard, and now it's down to 12%. But even then, that's fairly accurate. 12% is more than enough if you know how we road trip on inside EVs. And... Um, it also does this for multiple destinations. So if you say, I want to go uh, to your favorites list, it'll give you a list of what battery percentage you'll get at at each destination. It's always calculating. It's super smart and it's pretty cool. So they've really thought through a lot of this EV road tripping tech, the battery percentages, the whole system's extremely snappy. It controls everything well. I really was thrown in the car and sent on the road immediately. Didn't have time to, to push every button it was extremely intuitive to figure out, get my settings correct. Everything on this car is easy, I would say. And I just, it's so hard for me to, to really nitpick it because it's such a great car. So the little things, you have, you have blind spot, you have uh, maybe ride comfort, but that's, you know, of course, balanced with performance. And you also have this weird volume knob in the middle. 
But aside from that, and a relatively squishy pedal tip in, but when you get into it, it gives you a lot of power. It's fantastic. And uh, Polestar has really, really nailed it with this. And I hope they have a bright future here in the US and around the world selling these amazing Polestar 2s and the soon to be Polestar 3. Thanks for watching. See ya.